I reviewed a bunch of 3D printers, some of them good and some of them bad. So where did they go and which ones have stood the test of time? I see 3D printer reviews as a necessary aspect of running this channel because I need to keep in touch with the latest developments and know what's good value for my viewers. Sometimes the review process really does feel like work because unless the printer is good, I spend way too much time troubleshooting and not enough time actually printing. I don't have the room or need to keep every printer I've ever reviewed. Therefore, I only keep my favorite ones. One of my patrons asked me recently if I will be willing to do a long-term follow-up on my various ready printer reviews. I'll briefly recap each printer. I'll go through anything I had to do to keep it running, any modifications to give it a specialist purpose, and if I no longer have it, what I did to fix it up and who it went to. First up, the Cocoon Create Touch, also known as a one how Duplicator i3+. Plus. And this video was insanely popular for me in the early days of the channel. At the time, I thought this was a pretty solid printer, and I still do, because out of the box, it printed quite well. The firmware did have some very slow aspects and quirks, that's why one of the first things I did was update it to the awesome aftermarket ADV i3++. This was the first printer that I ever fitted a BL Touch to, but by far the most significant mod that I did was fitting a Flexion extruder, and that speaks to my philosophy when I have multiple 3D printers, specificity. This printer is specifically set up just to do TPU, and whether it's a firm one or a mega stretchy, it gets the job done with a minimum of fuss and quite good printing speeds. I don't use it that often, but when I do, it makes printing TPU really easy. An early review was the GTEC A10M, and its main feature was that it had a dual extruder mixing nozzle, two filaments in, one nozzle out. This meant that with a purge block, it could do traditional multicolor printing, but it could also transition between two different colors without specialist G-code. I did some simple upgrades like Easy R Struders and a BL Touch, but one day I powered it on and inexplicably the mainboard went pop. I found it hard to source a replacement locally. In fact, this one is a different board. So with a shiny new mixing extruder kit ready to make a video on, I decided to disassemble it and turn it into spare parts. Another really early review was the Tronxy X1 and it was only 120 US dollars. It had some limitations such as a lack of heated bed, but for the money, it's hard to argue with the print quality that I was able to achieve. It sat around for a while, but I eventually fixed it up by printing an all-in-one case. I also discovered the V-rollers didn't have adjustment, so fitted the ones from the GTEC A10M. This tightened everything up before it went to my nephew to start his 3D printing journey. Now he's just got to learn not to put too much glue stick on the bed. Next up is the TiVo Tornado, and at the time it reviewed really well, and I thought it was an upgraded version of a CR10. Apart from having to take the step of grounding the mains powered AC bed, the Tornado has been flawless. It's been an absolute workhorse, and I've put many hours onto it over the years. It's been a great printer for testing, and on it I've tested out large nozzles, removable flexible build surfaces, and the Direct Drive E3D Titan Aero. Recently, I converted it to be an all-in-one machine, and upgraded it to dual extrusion with a switching nozzle kit. The A10M donated its Easy R Struders and its twin filament mounts. There were some teething issues during this upgrade, but it's really breathed new life into the printer, and I look forward to experimenting with multi-materials in the future. How about a toy 3D printer, the Easy 3 d Nano? This thing has a very limited user interface, and it's agonizingly slow when it prints. The print quality is not amazing, but I'd say it is respectable. At one stage, it was my candidate for making a fully portable 3D printer, but instead it's sitting idle and I'm waiting to donate it to the right person. I still think it would be an excellent first printer for a young child. So what about another small printer, but instead this time a very capable one. The Monoprice Mini Delta wasn't perfect, but I was blown away by the print quality as it printed right out of the box. This printer has an amazingly strong community. So I made a follow up video featuring community mods and the addition of a Wham Bam flexible bed but then I really went off the deep end. Not only converting it to an SKR Mini E3 board, a Big Tree Tech TFT35, 
but adding LiPo batteries inside and making it completely portable. I haven't found a need for this yet, but who knows what the future will bring. The JG Aurora A5S reviewed fairly well. The print quality was quite good, and overall I'd describe this machine as solid, but unspectacular. It used a strange firmware that was hard to edit, so I donated it to a local school, and it's done a great job since. Hopefully I just got a lemon, because this AlphaWise U30 is one of the worst printers I've ever reviewed. The manufacturing standard was questionable, and it suffered from terminal under extrusion. But worst of all, the main board caught on fire. Apparently my GearBest contact was surprised when I had many negative comments. I haven't responded to a GearBest email since. But this one has a happy ending, because I gave this printer a complete overhaul, including a wham bam bed, mainboard conversion and auto bed leveling system. It went to a friend who immediately started making custom mountain bike parts. Around that time I also reviewed the Creality Ender 5 and for the review period it was pretty much flawless. It's proved to be a reliable base for building up an enclosed 3D printer, specifically upgraded to have a heated enclosure to print high temperature filaments. Due to inefficiencies in my design these filaments still warped the most recent modification was fitting linear rails and I hope to revisit it, add a lot more insulation and improve the performance with these filaments. I reviewed the next two large format printers side by side at the same time. Firstly, the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1 and this one reviewed quite well, with good print quality and quite a robust frame. Since then, I've only added a wham bam bed and a BL touch, which one day I'll get around to wiring up properly it's still a go-to printer for me because it prints really fast. My only warning about this machine is they change the ribbon cable connectors over time, so check with community groups which design you'll be getting. The CR10S Pro didn't fare so well in the initial review period. The potential was there, but it had silly failures like the part cooling fan duct. I followed up with a video with seven easy fixes, and it's been working very well without further change since then. I use this one regularly when I'm feeling patient and looking for high print quality with a slower speed. A similar printer in this bracket is the BQ Thunder. Once I fixed the slicing profile, the print results on this were extremely good. However, there were two persistent problems. The 12 volt power supply meant it took a long time for things to heat up and the print job to start, and the removable flexible bed was already falling apart by the end of my review. Both problems were fixed with a wham bam build surface. It's thinner, so it heats up faster. And since the base of the printer is already magnetic, only the spring steel sheet was needed and it slips right on. I donated this one to a teacher friend and I haven't heard anything since, so he's either using it trouble free or not using it at all. Some printers, however, have problems that are much harder to fix. The Alter 4 arrived in a very bad state with stepper motors trying to hide and loose bolts inside the power supply. Furthermore, no thermal runaway protection paired with a thermistor that wasn't actually secured inside the heating block. Obviously, I couldn't recommend this to beginners, but mechanically, the printer was actually quite good. First layer inconsistency was cured by connecting the sensor in place of the ZN stop, configuring a fresh version of Marlin to suit, before this one went to an architect friend where it could do what I thought it did best in my review, printing large architectural models. The Cetus Mark III had some strong points, but seemed out of date for the price. Despite featuring what should be really rigid linear rails and guides, this printer suffered from some of the worst ringing that I've ever seen. Quirks and price aside, this printer was still really suitable for beginners. With completely pre-configured software, and thanks to the textured bed as well as always using a raft, First layers were very consistent. The varying diameter easy change nozzles also made it quite good at printing small and detailed objects. I donated this one to a friend as their first 3D printer, and remember for a new user, ringing is something you do on the telephone. So what might seem like a deal breaker to an experienced user can be largely insignificant to others. The CR10 Max had similar teething issues to the CR10S Pro. After some minor tweaks and the addition of an E3D Hemera with Volcano Hot End and 0.6mm nozzle, this is my go-to for anything large I need in a hurry, this printer does objects in about half the time of any other. 
Quite recently, I reviewed this MakerPie K5 Plus and it had some strong points, but also significant issues. One of which being that it didn't really perform that well with high temperature filaments like I'd hoped. Since then, thanks to a tip off from viewer Barry, I've verified that the hot end is not even all metal, but instead lined with PTFE tube. Design flaws are one thing, but dishonesty is another. I'm currently fixing it up ready to donate to a school, making simple fixes like a proper length of PTFE tube and Velcro tape to hold the lid into place. I've also flipped the glass bed to use hairspray, so no kids hack their fingers off with a scraper. The Prusa Mark III I've had for a long time now, and it's proven to be nearly flawless. The only parts I've ever changed is upgrading to the Bontech extruder. It still prints really well and is ultra reliable. These days I primarily use it with PETG. So how about its little brother, the Prusa Mini? Like many in the early batches, my printer suffered from filament jams, and I wasn't quite happy with the print quality using the inbuilt Prusa slicer profiles. Since then, Prusa has been doing outstanding work with face shields, so my printer's been sitting there collecting dust, but more recently firmware and software updates have started to flow through, so I will fire it up and give it another chance. How about something that I adored, the Seket SK Go. This all metal jointed linear rail Core XY Beast was fun to build and produced outstanding print quality. I've done some light mods on it, but for the most part it's been sitting idle. And that's because it's a tinkering machine and I've been enjoying tinkering with it. I'm currently deciding whether I want to remix this remote flex extruder to use twin Bontech gears I have spare, and it will definitely be receiving a Duet Maestro and touchscreen at some stage. The specs and pricing of this printer have been changing since my review, so check out the Facebook group for all the details. So how about a large format Core XY machine that I really didn't enjoy reviewing, the Tronxy X5 SA Pro. Commenters in that video that owned this printer agreed with me that it had great potential, but a fair amount of work was required to get it up to spec. I did manage to get the gantry a fair bit squarer, but I had to dremel a slot in the top of a rounded bolt to remove it, and go through the tensioning again. I don't want to put any more time into it, so I'm donating it to a friend that has a print farm and well and truly has the knowledge and skill required to fix it. Finally, the Ender 3, and I've actually had three of these. The first one got mainly printed mods as well as a Pets Fang and Easy ABL. It went to these two young brothers who are mad about 3D printing their own designs. The only issue they've had was a blown MOSFET and they took this opportunity to upgrade to the Creality Silent board. My second Ender 3 was a pro that you've seen in a lot of my videos. There's too many mods to list here, so instead I'll refer you to this Ender 3 playlist with 42 videos. Like many of you, I love tinkering with this machine, but besides that, it's also quite reliable and I use it all the time for day-to-day -day prints. The third Ender 3 was a standard that I purchased just to fit the Ender Extender and K3D Core XY kits too. I've got great plans for this one and I'm currently developing two mods which I think will be well received by the community. So there you have it, that's what's happened to all of the printers that I've reviewed and hopefully it gives you a little bit more information if you're considering making a purchase because now you know how they fare long term. It's also a lesson that sometimes you need to look from other people's points of view. Sometimes the comments really bag out a printer because of specific issues, but if that printer is going to someone new to 3D printing, they really couldn't care less about a little bit of ringing or incompatibility with high temp ABS. Some of the printers that didn't review favorably have gone on to make their new owners very happy, and that's a really good thing. For this video, I'd like to know from you, have you ever earned a 3D printer so frustrating that you ended up getting rid of it? please let me know down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.